Hi, my name is Darkbreaker and I'm rank 1 in World Truth. And just a little copy pasta meme. Um, yeah, I'm, I can show you something really, really exciting so you guys can see how well we are doing. This is me playing um, a little bit of jungling, a little bit of jungling action as you guys can see. Just a little bit of smurfing as well. And if you guys want to dominate on the rift as well, like I, like I think I had a 12 win streak on Kha'Zix by the way. 12 win streak on Kha'Zix, you can see the stats like I'm absolutely demolishing 18-5, 18-0. Absolutely demolishing the opponents playing jungle. And my two most favorite junglers right now are Kha'Zix and Diana. And uh, yeah, this is pretty much jungle macro uh, updated for season 10. If you guys want to learn and understand how to play jungle, you are here watching the right video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you guys are enjoying it. I'm going to try to summarize this a little bit more quicker than usual. Because I've made jungle guides beforehand and I just want to discuss the changes they did um, with the dragon timers changing, herald timers changing, Barret, baron and elder timer also got changed, baron is easier to do now. I haven't made a jungle guide since those changes. On top of that we have season 10 right now and if you guys want to push using jungle and I think jungle is one of the best positions in solo queue to push. If you guys want to push in duo queue, then uh, bot lane plus support is, I mean, ADC plus support is the strongest position to push in duo queue. And for solo queue, I would say it is jungle because jungle has the best impact. And I'm going to tell you how you guys can affect the map and play a clean macro, control the map and win the game. Um, yeah, so we're going to summarize all the little things about pathing, about macro control. Um, and then afterwards, we're going to hop into a gameplay that was pretty competitive and a great showcase of how you can um, win the game by good macro. On top of that, number one most important tip as a jungler is um, to not tilt. Use party chat and don't tilt. I know solo queue jungling is very frustrating. You have four top lost flaming you. Gank me, gank me daddy, gank me. I need your help, I need babysit. I'm losing my lane. I'm, I'm losing my lane one versus one. Or I'm getting caught because uh, I'm ignoring my wards. Hey jungler, where's my jungler? Jungle difference, blah, 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 etc. And then even if you're getting like three dragons, I've lost games with, with three dragons. I have lost the game with three dragons plus elder, by the way. I have three. I still get three dragons and elder, and I still lost the game. So, uh, dragons are not necessary. The wow, the most broken thing. If you don't get dragon, you're losing the game. If you don't get first dragon, you lost the game. No. It is not the case. It is solo queue. Solo queue is a clown fiesta, and most of the times. Let's say you have four apes, but the opponents also have probably apes in that team. So uh, it is your job. It is your job to carry harder and play the most consistent way to win the most games. Because at the end of the day, what matters is not one win, but your win rate or your consistency across 100 games, 200 games, 300 games. Um, and I just want to clarify the matchmaking thing I, uh, I did, right? I did a matchmaking video. Uh, talking about the game state, the matchmaking, but this also applies mainly for high elo, for diamond, master plus, and higher, where like people that definitely shouldn't belong into that rank. In lower ranks, it also applies, but not as uh, as much as in higher ranks, because at the end of the day, if you're like hard stuck, um, silver, gold, uh, emerald, platinum, it is most likely that you probably can just play way better and uh, carry those games uh, in the long run on your own but and just playing better being a better um solo carry so yeah that still stands um i think by the time you watch this i was like two marks and right now i'm grandmaster again i'm grandmaster already i pushed like in two days or three days in three days i'm at like almost 30 marks so it is possible to overcome losers queue by playing consistent focusing on not tilting don't interact with those um inters in your games it's gonna like trust me the, what i'm saying right now is very very important more important than the macro tips i'm giving you like good mental good mental mindset that you want to improve and play consistent 
don't talk and interact with people that are just gonna tell you and these people are gonna flame you regardless they're like oh jungle gang blah 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 gank me gank me why no gank why they are they they can't even they they don't have arms they can't even handle like they play an easy matchup and they can't even play safe they can't even weak side or whatever uh, there are so many scenarios as a jungler especially like as a jungler you pay attention to all three lanes like when i'm jungling i always look like how are the others laning how's the pri priority like are they winning the lane are they losing the lane are they gonna get ganked are they playing too overextended are getting ganked are they low life and they're easy diveable like these are all the things you have to think about by the way as a jungler like i mean obviously i couldn't tell you about uh the pathing okay i'm going red clear i'm going red clear into a scott hill and then maybe go for gank pop pop or i go red clear into an invade or I go full clear and then i get the scott hill and then a gank gank i mean this is very basic i think by now i've made two jungle videos by now you guys already understand that and it's not that uh important jungle pathing honestly isn't uh, it's very basic and it's not as important as some people might think. Um, it really depends on who are you facing against and um, what champion are you playing and what are the lane priorities. These three things are important when it comes down to how do you path and who do you want to avoid or who do you want to gank. So we have the standard clear would be you just go full red clear, full red clear into scuttle. Or full red clear into the other side scuttle, or full red clear into a gank, or full red clear into an invade. Very simple. Red, Crux, Raptor, I mean, it doesn't matter how you start it, by the way. And then option two is a full clear. I start Crux, Bop, Red Buff, then this, then this, then this, then this, then scuttle. And then I'm level five. I can reset, look for gank or counter gank, or I'm just ganking immediately. This guy's overextended, bam, I'm ganking. This guy's overextended, bam, I'm ganking. This is like the standard. These are the standards. So I'm just starting blue clear. You can also just uh, start blue clear. Let's say um, you're playing against Kane, for example. Kane are always ganking bot lane because they want to get the blue form, right? Then you can start blue form. Bop, 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 and then you're counter ganking. And then, oh, you're getting scuttle, right? And then you're going this, and then you have level 5 as well. He's gonna have level 5, he's gonna try to gank bomb coming from here, or coming from the river. And then you can just counter gank. This is like, basic understanding about passing, and then you have to consider the enemy jungler, whether or not you can contest the scuttle. Most of the times if you play a weak jungler, it's better to just go for full clear. And I, I would recommend you guys, 90% of the times it's better to just get level 5. Instead of going for early jungle ganks or early jungle fights, unless you're playing a strong early game jungler like Lee Sin, Riven, Jarvan, they want to invade, potentially they want to invade, or they want to force a fight at Scuttle. In this, in this case, you want to avoid the confrontation, and if you play the early game jungler, you want the confrontation, or you want the invade, potentially. You could also just invade level 1, like with the red trinket, you're coming to the red buff, and then you're trying to invade. And I know, for example, Vex, he likes to sometimes go... He starts raptors, enemy raptors with the red trinket, then he goes into this brush, and then he tries to cheese and steals. He gets level 2, and then he tries to steal this. Like, he almost, I think you're almost level 2 when you're raptors, then you're waiting, then you're trying to steal this, and then you get level 2 and you're killing him, and you get first blood, and then you're snowballing. This is something that you can also do if you play like an early aggressive jungler, like a Lee Sin, like a Kane potentially, is also good at invading, uh, Riven, Jarvan. Um, but I would recommend this as a beginner because a lot of times you will get punished if the enemy uh, mid laner or top laner have priority and they're gonna rotate immediately and collapse on you. It's uh, it's risky, risky high reward, high risk high reward. But this is just bad thing. I think by now, if you have played ten seasons of Wild Drift or if you guys are beginner, if you guys are beginner, feel free to check the first jungle guide I've made. Uh, but this video is more focusing on about like the macro aspect of how to play the game more cleanly and how you can decide what objectives to do. Um, maybe I can talk about the ganking really quick, right? When it comes to ganks, you can just gank from the river, obviously. If they are completely overextended, you can set up a lane gank. Um, mm hmm. Coming from the lane like this, 
And then there's uh, this guy coming, he's just trying to trade, and then you're just stepping forward, and boom, 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 you kill him, right? Or you're just coming from behind. You can obviously... If you're using a red trinket, and there are no wards, you can also come from behind like this, and you're just flanking. Or, you're running around completely like this, if you think there are some wards here. Maybe there's a ward here, a ward here. You can just run completely from behind, and then you're ganking. But most people don't even expect lane ganks, by the way. Lane ganks are very, very efficient. When do you know how to gank? When, when do you know when you should gank and when you should not gank? Option 1 is, your laner is dominating the lane opponent and the lane opponent is super low and there's a wave crashing in and you're just gonna go for the dive, boom, free. But diving is also something that might not work consistently if you don't uh, do the um, turret acro management well. Option 2 is, the lane opponent is completely uh, overextended because he's pushing in the wave. Bam, flank from behind, free kill. And option three is, you, the guy's playing aggressive and you're just setting up a lane gank. Bam. And then four is counter ganking. You assume or you know, okay, the enemy jungler is gonna gank. Oh wow, he wants to gank bot lane. I'm gonna wait in this brush, for example, here. I'm gonna wait in the brush. This uh, cane is coming, or he's coming like this. They're initiating. And then I'm coming out of the brush. Boom. Sayonara. Bye bye. Easy. So this is just what is my thought process about when to gank or not. And if there's no situation where you can gank, just focus on farming. Keep farming, keep farming, and then try to look for counter gank. Or maybe also try to look for like some sneaky invades, trying to ski some small camps, denying the opponent from golden experience. And now, hey, now we're talking about the macro aspect, because I think this is way more important, because you guys need to understand that the dragons aren't as important as you guys might think, especially not the first dragon. When do you go for the first dragon? You have the stronger teamfight composition, you're dominating in the early game, or you already killed one or two people before the dragon is spawning, and then you're in a man advantage. Bam, then do it. Or it's a very important dragon, you could consider, okay, do I really want it? Maybe. But if you don't have the stronger teamfight composition. What do you do instead? You trade the objective, you go for the Herald, for example. Or if the other guy wants to go Herald, you go for the Dragon. You're just trading objectives. The Herald is very good, by the way. Both Dragon and Herald are spawning at 5 minutes. And if you do it, guess what? You can just take the mid turret. By taking this mid turret, you're getting 150 gold per plating. And I don't know how much gold you're getting. Um... You're killing maybe four or five plating, so that's a bunch of gold. Then you're getting the first turret gold, and then you're getting um, the normal turret gold. So that's a lot of gold that your allies are getting and yourself are getting. What well, they're getting maybe an ocean dragon, ocean dragon shit, anyways. Um, by the way, for the order, I would say it's it's hard to say honestly. I think mountain is very good. Mountain, inferno, and um, ice dragon are super good. While the ocean is kind of neglectable, if it's first ocean dragon, you can just give it. Especially if you have like split pushers in your team, they're not good when they're joining. So yeah, if you, let's say you have a Jax or Fiora, it, I would not recommend going for the dragon team fight. You're probably gonna end up losing it. So by, by getting this turret, you open up the map, and it's easier for your mid laner to rotate to the side lanes, or your, for you to invade as well because now this this huge defensive tool is away, and you can set up more deep wards. Also, when you open this turret, what what you can do is try to siege this turret, right? You're gonna try to get this turret afterwards, because then your bot lane can go mid lane and your mid lane can go side lane. At this point, the mid lane can always push in the wave quickly and then rotate to this side lane or to this side lane. That's usually what people do in like uh, competitive or high elo. That the bot lane then switches into the mid lane, and from there, they are extending their lead, spreading it. Ah, you gotta spread it. Um, into the side lanes, right? Uh, extend that lead. But yeah, this is, this is how you get the... This is the um, early mid game, the mid game. And once you did this, it's time to go and secure the other objectives. The goal afterwards is to secure... 
the tier 1 turret. After you secure the tier 1 turrets, your next goal is to try to am like collapse on side lanes that are overextended to snowball further. Denying camps, stealing camps, stealing camps, stealing camps, stealing camps, and setting ambushes like putting deep wards, putting a deep ward here, putting a deep ward here, putting a deep ward uh, in this brush or here, etc. These are very important um, like key points to set up ambushes pick up some people for the before the next objective spawns and extend the lead like you're um denying them from any point to get more gold so you can extend the snowball and the lead this is the mid game this is what you want to do in the mid game when you are ahead um the the funny thing is no we have the bounty system right now when it comes on to bounty system it means when you have the gold lead they uh, get the bounty enabled for an objective and if they get the objective they're getting a lot of gold so your priority should be to defend those uh, bounties the sideline turrets a lot of times people are gonna rotate oh wow i'm rotating for a kill and then they're giving the bounty turret away for no goddamn reason like we we had to secure the herald just to open up the mid turret and then you rotate to the side lane without clearing your mid wave and that guy is just taking the turret for free guess what they're getting the gold back for no fucking reason this is the biggest major mistake that everyone is doing like at some point oh wow i got the turret and then they're just roaming they're getting nothing out of the roam and then they're just giving the turret for free giving the opponent's go back to come back so easy to come back games by just going for bounty turrets because people are like fight 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 by fight but no macro macro objectives big mistake also just over forcing team fights for objectives is also a main problem that people are doing like they're like if i if we don't get the dragon we're gonna lose the game we have to fight it oh my god one of us is dead just keep fighting it it's a big mistake by the way one of the biggest mistakes on how to throw the game um, like let's say one one of us is getting caught it's a four versus five situation and we are in the lead just give that shitty second dragon don't care they can have you can lose one dragon you can lose two dragons you can still win the game giving three dragons kind of critical i would probably try to suicide to get the third dragon but even with three dragons behind you can still win the game by the way i have lost games or have won games with zero or three dragons vice versa Dragons are good, or uh, dragons are great at snowballing, but it's not worth sacrificing the whole team giving a bunch of kills or shutdowns for a shitty dragon, by the way. So keep that in mind. This is like, we're talking about mid game right now. And then we're entering the late game. Then when people are clowning and fighting for the Baron, for Baron and Elder. Baron spawns at 12 and Elder spawns at 17. So the first major objective that people want to clown around is the baron okay i'm gonna use the yellow this big boy is a reason on how you can easily win the game or how you can easily throw the game if it's a five versus five situation just don't do it even if you're in the lead because there's the risk uh, of this getting stolen and especially if you didn't set up, like you need to set up like what here, set up a what here, set up a what here, set up a what here. So you know the entry points if they want to collapse and try to steal it, right? If the enemy jungle is alive, it is risky. If you're really in the lead and you see, okay, multiple people are, the enemy enemies are like chasing someone, like three people are chasing. Three people are chasing a side lane. You can rush the Baron. If you're in the lead, what you can do is you can start the Baron. Start the Baron, and if they're coming, you can turn on them and collapse. And if they don't come, you just rush it. These are your two options, or three options, if you're like, this is the easiest. And then, the other thing what you can do is, you can either start it and lure them in and then engage on them, or you can set up an ambush or set, uh, set up a trap. At this point of the game, when you have the mid turret already and the Baron is going to spawn, what you want to do is, you're setting up as a jungler, deep what and try to collapse like if they're coming like the opponents are trying to check they're trying to check this way they're trying to check this way and your teammates you're sitting here in the brush or you're sitting here or you're sitting here and you're catching one or two people boom it's a free baron afterwards this is how you set up for baron 
and for elder as well for elder it's the same principle um either you're waiting to catch people beforehand and then you're starting it for free because the enemy jungle is already dead and they don't have poking champions if they're very strong poking champions there's the risk that you're taking too much damage while you're doing it but the first baron is very squishy if you're in the lead you can rush it extremely quickly the the first burn is very very easy to do so this is what you wanna do setting ambushes killing people beforehand or catching people before and, and then going for the objective the same applies for the elder by the way they're spawning at 17 minutes and then with the baron what you do is afterwards okay in this case you kill two people you got the baron bam what you do is you can do it in two ways option one is one four one into the side lane you have one guy side lane and four guys mid lane pushing mid lane and pushing side lane this way, you are creating a two-lane pressure. Trying to get this turret and trying to get this turret. Like, these are the turrets you want to get with the Baron afterwards. Bam. This way, you can... This way, it's easier for you to uh, make sure you're getting the turrets. Uh, because you have a four-man push from this way. Like, four people are pushing this and then and this. And then you can try to get this first and try to get this first. Because sometimes, if you're splitting yourself 1-3-1... One, maybe it won't work out as well to secure the tier 3 turrets but if you're super dominating you can also try the 1-3 obviously like 1-3 would be just 1-3 is the classic that most people are doing mm, like this 1-3-1 one, one. pushing from 3 lanes trying to get those tier 3 turrets this can also work by the way but it's more consistent if you just do the 1-4 getting those turrets get the next baron and then you're trying to get this it's more consistent and it's easier for you guys to siege them uh because you're sp uh, you're you're splitting your manpower by doing this so one guy can defend this one guy can defend this and the other three are going this but if you're sieging with four people you're gonna most likely poke them down push them away and it's gonna be harder for them to clear the wave because you're pushing with four people and then from this there's the baron laner also pushing in so you're gonna get the first two turrets, and then you get the next bear, and then you go from the last turret, and then you can end the game. But at this point, this is how you uh, try to end the game, by getting those turrets. But obviously, at 70 minutes, guess what happens? At 70 minutes, if you didn't manage, at this point, if you're with the Baron, best case, option one, you already won the game because you're dominating too hard. Option two, you got two turrets, or one turret. You got this, or maybe you got the tier two turrets. At this point, when you got the Baron, you already secured this one. Best case, you secured this one, you secured this one. And maybe you got the tier 3. But if you didn't get tier 3, what you do is you're just waiting for the next objectives. Just do the same ambushing, like setting up traps. Keep farming the entire. Like, since you secured... Oh, I, oh my god, I just removed this, right? Since you secured these three, now you have this advantage. You have this advantage that this side is yours. If you also set up some lovely wards for yourself. You're setting up a bunch of wards for yourself. And you can try to ambush. So this whole part right here, this whole section right here, should be yours. Dominating it, farming and stealing all of the stuff that the opponents want. But they are not getting it anymore. And then afterwards... Like, if you're catching one or two people and you're uh, pushing from this, uh, these three lanes, maybe you can get one turret because they're chasing your teammates here and your ally can just secure the three turrets. Or you're waiting for the next objective and you're doing the same process I told you about for the next Baron and Elder. Then you're trying to get the Baron and you're trying to get the Elder. And then afterwards, you do the same process about 1-3-1. One, one, Sieging here, sieging here, sieging here. Then three ways are crashing at the same time. It's too hard for them to defend it, and you can open up the other turrets. This is, by the way, this is what I'm saying is like not only jungle knowledge, but also for like for every lane on how to finish the game if you play it correctly. It is a macro guide in general, but this is the main focus about what the jungler wants to do, obviously, securing objectives and how to end the game. But yeah, this summarizes everything already that you guys need to know. Hmm. This is how you snowball games, this is what I do every single game. How I control the map. Like at this point, when you're snowballing, invade, invade, steal, ambush, invade, steal, ambush, securing objectives. This is what you do every single time. 
no that's good let's i think that's really good already and we're gonna talk about the next gameplay you guys can tell me below in the comments what you guys think about those tips on how to end the game cleanly how to snowball and how to control the map afterwards and for you guys wondering if you're behind um you kind of do the same but you also try to ambush and try to pick off shutdowns you guys will see in the gameplay i'm going to talk more about it in the gameplay because it's a good showcase on how to come back so this is how you play it cleanly out and how you can trade and think about objectives like okay do i trade for the objectives go do i go for the fight or not it depends on the game state depends on your allies depends on the team composition and depends on the enemy team composition if the enemy team com has like insane um team finding composition try to trade or try to pick them off if you have like a pick up composition like with the twisted fake kha'zix kamil etc you want to pick people one by one or with a fresh blitzcrank pick them one by one with good vision control and catch them and then you have the man advantage and you can go for the objective team fight force this is like the two and if you have the team fight count then obviously you want to force the team fight it's very basic but yeah let's talk let's watch this lovely video right here it's a lovely i mean i'm a kha'zix man so i'm gonna show you ooh, kha'zix gameplay oops let me let me remove this Okay, we can close this one. Let's get started! Kha'zix! I didn't pay attention who I'm playing against. We're gonna go for a blue, a blue, key, a blue clear right here. Um, it is faster than the red clear start as a Kha'zix because of the isolation on blue buff and the Gromp. And if you, if, you, if you do it optimally, you can do uh, Blue, Gromp, then Wolf, then Raptors, then Scuttle. Then you go for Red and your Crux and you get level 5 very quick. I think I'm also pathing towards bot side because the enemy jungler might be a champion that is gonna gank my bot lane. So I want to be ready to counter gank because most junglers always want to gank bot lane to snowball bot lane side. So I am ready trying to counter gank on that side of the map. And also this clear is very fast for Kha'Zix. Oh yeah, I was looking for like a... Oh yeah. I saw the fist was low life, that's why I was moving this way. Oh, he flashed away at the same time. I get the kill, but Kane is gonna kill me as well. So it's a two for one, it's not worth it. Yeah, I tried to flank around because I saw the fist was low life. But this is bad because... Um, Kane gets a kill and he's gonna get double scatter as well in this case. So the early game is not the greatest right now. Oh yeah, I was playing against Kane. I already said it to you guys. Since I was playing against Kane, I was trying to path towards my bot side, get level 5 and try to counter gank. Because Kane obviously wants to gank the bot lane. So I will be there to counter gank and prevent those ganks. The problem is... He has the advantage right now, experience advantage. I'm not quite getting level 5. I'm waiting for Kane to maybe gank here. Right now, I'm waiting for the Kane to gank, so I'm going for lane gank. I am, I'm assuming Kane is gonna come pretty soon. Oh, okay, this guy is stepping forward, I'm jumping in. And the, the Kane is also here. Okay, Vayne dies to my rep buff. Let's see if we can kill this guy. Nice. Get the double kill. Two for one. Kane was also in the brush, by the way. I, w I jumped in there because I saw Vayne used her tumble, her first ability forward. And I know afterwards it's in cooldown, so I jumped on her right after that. So I was being patient, seeing, okay, can I gank on him? And okay, he has a pink ward. I'm going to clear it first. And my blue side is also up. So you, th you see the thought process about thinking, okay, what is the enemy jungler gonna do? In this case, okay, Kane likes to gank bot lane because he wants to get the blue form. And in this case, Ezreal and Lux are good enablers for Kane to get that lovely blue form. Just gonna continue farming right here.
Okay, I think I'm gonna reset. And then I'm going bot lane again. The Galio is super overextended, that's why I pinged it. And he's gonna die. Yeah, Galio is pushing too far out and he's just dying. I mean, he has... You see what I mean with... Um, he has no vision and... He's not playing safe. Like, he's already losing one versus one, and then he's super overextended in the, into the lane. Like, he's literally right next to the enemy turret. Ooh, I might die here, actually. Ooh, he's so low life. He survives, actually. That's tragic. Yeah, but Kane got the scuttle now. Since I uh, tried to defend the turret. Galio's playing too aggressive, even though he's behind. If you're behind, you A want to ward up and b you just want to try to clear the wave and not try to go for any one versus ones uh, anymore but a lot of times liners are like i need to fight i need to fight i need to fight what's spawning it's ocean dragon right here i think kane is already at Herald. Yeah, Kane is at Herald, I think. That's why I'm starting this. Oh, Kane is here. Okay, we're flipping, kind of. Do I get it? I do get it. Okay, I'm out. Okay, we get the kill. This was kind of coin flip. To be honest, normally I would have went for the Herald, but I passed bot side already and I was late to go to the Herald, so I was like, mm, maybe I can get bot lane. And then I saw, okay, Kane is still not here. I was like, okay, Kane is not there. Maybe he said Herald, so we're just gonna go for the Herald instead. Okay, get the pick off here. I'm gonna evolve the third WD, so I get the jump reset and longer jump range. Garen versus Jax right now. Okay. Okay, Kane is here. This is flipping what I'm doing. I should have not done that. Okay, he's gonna use the ultimate. If I kill him, I can jump out. Yep, nice. Let's kill this Kane first, maybe. Ooh, that's the fist. I got it. Nice. Jumping in again. And we get the kill, and I'm just gonna use the Herald into the mid lane. I thought we were behind, we're actually doing really good. I'm gonna use I'm not gonna use Herald here because they're dead and they can't defend. And we have a cannon minion here, so we can get it regardless. The plating timer is running out though, so I'm gonna use a bot side. I'm gonna go and use a bot lane right now. So I can get the platings and we can get the remaining to one turret of the opponents. So I'm just gonna walk here and use the Herald bot lane. Before it runs out. I did, oh yeah. I remember I did a mistake though. The Herald is not crashing. It's on the minions and Fizz is gonna kill it. That was a mistake. The Herald is not crashing into the turret. I wanted to use it quickly. Because the platings are running out at 7.30. And when it runs out... Uh, we can no longer get the addition gold from the platings because for each plating we're getting addition 150 gold. So that was a misplay. Maybe if I came from behind and used it directly into it, it would have been better. Okay, at this point of the game, we open up two turret already. It's time to ambush and try, time to pick off people. Okay, this guy is gonna try to chase my lovely teammates. Dude, they are very strong though. Vayne is really strong. Vayne Yumi are super strong. And the problem about Vayne Yumi is also I don't do isolation damage when Yumi is onto someone because it counts as like an ally on top. Not getting that bot to it is kind of annoying because it would have been enabled our support to rotate easier or for our bot lane to rotate easier afterwards. Okay, 
Okay, they do get it now. Nice. But yeah, at this point I'm still farming. You need to find the right balance between farming and ganking, by the way. Farming, ganking, and invades. When you see easy ganks, go for those ganks. If you don't see an easy gank, just focus on farming or keep farming. I'm not sure why he wasted his ultimate because we need this ultimate for the next team fight. The next team fight is or the next dragon is spawning soon. So his ultimate would be very useful to be in the next team fight. And right here I'm trying to maybe ambush and catch people and do some damage onto them. He went too deep, he jumped into deep. I just wanted to poke him. I just wanted to chunk down the Garen before the dragon spawns, but he went in too deep. Oh, this is not good. This is not good. They're probably gonna get. I I use smite so I can heal up a bit. They're gonna they're diving under the turret. Look at Vayne just chasing under the turret. Vayne is gonna die, but they're probably gonna get the uh, the turret right now. I mean the dragon right now. I'm gonna get stasis for the cane ultimate and for the fist ultimate. Maybe they can stop it. It's at two thousand right now. Oh, they do get it. Yeah, I'm not sure why Yumi is open. You need to ban Yumi. <laughs> you need to ban Yumi. The thing is, I didn't ban it because we had first pick, by the way. Tragic. Okay, we're just gonna get a free pick off. Does he get the turret? He doesn't get the turret. Nice. I'm gonna keep farming. The Baron is spawning soon. And now it's time to set up ambushes. Time to ward the Baron up, light it up, and then try to pick off people. If we can catch the cane, we can just rush it, honestly. It's 12 17 right now, the opponents are kind of winning. Um, I'm just trying to clear it right here. Okay, he's gonna use his ultimate. Oh, he jumps. I'm not sure why he jumps back in there. Hmm. Hmm, this is bad. Look at Yumi just running. Look at Vayn Yumi just running us down right now. It is bad. They can... Ooh, wow, 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 we wow, 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 we wow, wow. I am dead. Okay, right here the problem is they might just go for the Baron or they just might get the Baron. It's 12.22, looking pretty stale, pretty bad. And they got the Baron. This is bad that they got the Baron. Okay, no one is here. Kane is here. Kane is still here. And I got a kill on Kane, that's excellent. But yeah, Galio got caught, and then everyone else got collapsed because Vayne Yumi just ran us down under turret, just ran us down completely. Okay, what you want to do at this point is when they have Baron, just try to let it run out, try to clear the waves and let it run out. I'm looking for maybe a flank onto this fist if he overstays. No, he's just gonna back off. If he kept pushing, I would have tried to kill him and uh, catch him. But yeah, if they're not sieging, you can always just try to let it run out. Okay, 
And we have Serpent's Fang now as well. What's spawning? The third dragon spawning in a second, in 30 seconds. So I'm gonna be ready. Galio is 1 9 right now. They're slightly fit. But I mean, we can just give the dragon. It doesn't matter because we always secured one dragon. So if they get it, they have two dragons. It's not the end of the world if they have two dragons. It's 13 to 24 at this point. Potentially, we could try to steal it, but we don't have to secure it necessary. The mid wave is pushing in. That's not the greatest. Fist is here. Fist gets one shotted. Just jumping in too aggressively and too greedy on his part. And Lux, Lux stole that Inferno, that's huge by the way. That's so so huge that Lux stole that uh, Inferno. I could have played it better. Okay, there's a cane. Bam, we get the cane pick off. Excellent. Excellent. I'm just looking maybe for the vein right here. She's, a she's alone. Like there's a Look at them being so overextended. This guy lands the stun. It's huge. He lands the stun. Look at that damage I do on that um, vein plus Yumi. And guess what? The next objective is spawning soon. And the death timers are longer than when it's spawning so there's a chance of us just trying to steal it but we can for now just go for the tier 3 turret three people are dead we have a wave so we can try to get the tier 3 turret and then afterwards try to group for that next objective so it was very good like they had like a more than 10 10 kills lead but they ended up entering look at that damage onto this guy and now just go for the turret we have 10 seconds and I'm just getting one-shotted. I'm getting one-shotted. I, I should have jumped out, by the way. That's a big mistake by me. I could have just flashed out or jumped out immediately. I didn't expect him to one-shot me like that. And he even gets two kills. Now he dies as well. I'm going to get teleport right here. I'm getting teleport. This guy is dead for 45 seconds. And I'm saying, I think I'm going to say I have teleport. Uh, maybe start it. And we can just try to rush it. Because sometimes you just got to risk it. Especially if you have a champion that's it's really good at, at securing objectives, uh, like a Kha'Zix with his first ability into Smite. He actually gets one, uh, one, one for one here, or oh, one versus one, he wins it. So, right here, Kane is dead for 20 seconds, Fist is dead. I'm telling them, I got TP started. I got TP started. Started, 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 I got teleport, two people are dead. Two people are dead, and I have the pink ward as well. I extra have the pink ward, so I can clear... And or we can clear the wards if they are gonna come. And they have no one who can secure it. Who's gonna steal it? Vayne is gonna jump in? Is Vayne gonna jump in or what? That's the only chance for them to steal it. And boom, we get it. And now we have Baron. I'm gonna get the Guardian Angel for the revive. And boom, Elder is spawning. We got the sneaky Baron um, because Kane died. And his death time is longer than the Baron spawn. Plus, Yalu actually got the one versus one against the Fizz, so we had the man advantage as well. But even without the Fizz, I think we could have done it because Kane was dead. And right now, we get Baron plus Elder. This is so, so huge. Big mistake um, by them. They had the lead. I flash over. I one shot him with my Q. And right now, I'm just going to side lane and we can siege. We can siege the side lanes, we have Baron plus Zelda, we're super strong. We have really good poke as well with Esri and Lux in the late game. And this should be game. Okay, we got the kill right here, nice pick off. Okay, but I may have got an angel. It doesn't matter if I die like that. But yeah, that's that's good for the game. That's how we can come back when you're behind, picking off people. Like this, there's always a chance that the opponent becomes too cocky, too overconfident, and they're gonna end up inting. So this is how you can win it back, by the way. 
But yeah, GG's. I hope you guys enjoyed this video about uh, like the macro and how you can play the map more cleanly, what to avoid, what to do, etc. Um, stay calm. Honestly, stay calm is very important. Always think about how to come back because a lot of games are coming. Most games you can come back even though you think they're not winnable. I had like one game, they had two tier three turrets, they had Baron plus Elder, right? And we still won that game. And look, doomed. I wanted, nah, I wanted to surrender. I was like, nah, this game is lost. But we still end up winning. So, trust me, you can win games 10,000 gold behind or 12,000 gold behind because it's solo queue. Solo queue, people are cocky, clown fiesta, and they want to throw the game. But if that's comment, hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. Fire spreading all around my room My world's so bright It's hard to breathe But that's alright